Welcome to the Here I Am Talk Show with host Jamie Willis, where we discuss today's truths, people's stories, testimonies, healings, miracles, and so much more. Let's get started, honey. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Here I Am Show. And on today's show is, I think, in what I believe is going to be the most, one of the most powerful shows that I think I've ever done on my network. It is about, um, we're having Roberta Foster on here in just a couple minutes. And we've both been through deliverance and we've both been through, you know, seeing the healing power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And there's a lot of evangelists and pastors and preachers and these deliverance groups that are going all around the world and also, you know, going through deliverance class. And Roberta and I are going to go through that, you know, and deliverance isn't taught. It isn't something that you can learn from a book or from another pastor who's gone through the deliverance and you can't. It's actually going through the deliverance yourself and it's the total healing of every trauma, all the things that you've gone through, repentance, and giving it to the Lord and surrendering it and bringing it to the cross. And until you have total healing, it's very, very difficult for you to be able to pray over people. And I was on a show with Gary Schumacher and I like him a lot. You know, he's he's supported me in, in the Here I Am show. But also this weekend, I was on there with Alabama Woodsman. And I like these two gentlemen a lot. But I went on the show by myself. And I should have had somebody. I should have had a wingman. Because I didn't know that I was going to have to defend the healing power of, of the Lord, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I didn't know I had to get on there and defend deliverance. And that's where, you know, a little bit of my weakness, you know, came through on the show. I will do a link on the show that I did, you know, this past Saturday and let people, you know, see what happened. I still think that I glorified our Lord and Savior. I think I held my own. And, but I should have had somebody on there with me. And, but, you know, we learn lessons every single day. And there were, we're trying to defend the truth. And during, you know, us trying to defend the truth, We are going to go against spiritual warfare. And spiritual warfare is absolutely true. And that's what we're going through right now. So I would love to have Roberta on here, which I do now. And she is so biblically sound in scriptures of her experience with deliverance and being able to pray over people just like I can. And there's a couple other people, too, that are part of our group that are able to do it also. But we wanted to give you the truth and the biblical teachings of it and to be able to help you, like, you know, to be able to look up verses where it says, I am the truth and the light. No man can come to me but through my father. And so I'm going to bring Roberta on right now. Hi, Roberta. Hi, Jamie. Hi, everyone. And thank you for having me on, Jamie. Thank you. Oh, I, it's my pleasure. And, and as I said, I think this is going to be one of the most powerful shows that I think I've done. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so, too. And I know the, the Holy Spirit is going to be, the Holy Spirit is going to be working like yeah. crazy. Yep. So He's do you one. mind I'm starting this out with prayer? 
No. Father, in, in Jesus' name, we just pray for your presence. We pray, Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us. Help us to share everything you want us to share about deliverance ministry and setting the captives free. And I pray that this show will be led by you and um, that you will touch people's hearts. And um, Lord, your, your word says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And sometimes it's just they haven't read those scriptures or they haven't um, had deliverance ministry explained. But I pray today that the blind eyes would see and the deaf ears would hear that this is a true valid ministry um, of the Lord Jesus Christ and his disciples, those who were taught and those who are learned of him. And this is using the gifts of the Holy Spirit that were given to us for the edification of the body of Christ. So we thank you, Lord, be glorified on this show in every way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Roberta. You're welcome. Okay, so during this weekend, you know, I never thought I was getting on the show to talk about my experience with Greg Locke, mm -hmm. Global Vision, Bible Church, and what I went through about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And the conversation wind up turning into defending deliverance that most of the people think that these deliverances are fixed, you know, that they're paid actors and actresses. I'm not saying that some of these, you know, big mega churches don't do that. Mm -hmm. But in, in this church, I was seeing it. Um, you know, that they're, that the demons do manifest. Mm hmm in people, you know, and these spirits do come out screaming and yelling. Mm -hmm. And, but what through that, the Holy Spirit is, has taught me that mass deliverance does not work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a one on one with the person who needs it, who needs the healing. Mm -hmm. Because there's personal information, there's deep rooted hurt and fear and trauma that these people have gone through. And this, some of this trauma that people would tell me, they never told another living soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it eats away at them from, from their head to their toes, it does. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've gone through trauma for years and years and years. But deliverance is totally surrendering yourself to the Lord. And I don't want to live in this anymore. Yes. Help, help me to heal from this trauma. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have any more nightmares. I don't want to have this anxiety and this depression to the point sometimes that I that I feel like I want to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. So can you um, start? How did you get involved in deliverance? Well, <laughs> when, when I was a newer believer, uh, we're talking about, gosh, going back at least 30 years ago, um, I was in this church. And um, they actually met in their home. And um, I, I was saved. I had committed my life to Christ. Um, you know, my husband and I had read the Bible. We left the Catholic church. You know, we went to the Presbyterian church and they were debating homosexuality and stuff at the Bible study. So we didn't last long there. We, we were really looking for what, what lines up with the Bible, but this church did. And um, there were two guys there, older men, who were speaking that day. And they said, if anyone needs prayer, come up. And I went up there and um, the Lord, 
I had social anxiety from the house I grew up in. I had, um, uh, you know, I, I had issues, okay, big, big time issues. And I had less life of partying, um, listening to really rowdy music, going to clubs, that kind of stuff. And, um, but I had committed my life to Christ. But when I went up there, um, the guy started praying. It was two of them. And he looked at me, he looked me right in the eyes and he said, I see you in there like that. And I was like, what is he seeing, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, he goes, uh, did you listen to like, like really heavy rock music or something? I'm like, yeah, I did. And, and he goes, could you just tell the Lord you're sorry for that? Because that, that allows demonic spirits to oppress you to come in. Now, again, you're not possessed. You're, if you were possessed, you would be totally taken over with demons. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But but you can have them oppressing you. Okay. Um, and he said, I'm also hearing the Lord. Remember the gifts of the spirit, words of wisdom, words of knowledge. I'm also hearing from the Holy Spirit. My sheep hear my voice. This is all biblical people. I'm also hearing worship of Mary. And I said, well, yeah, I left the Catholic Church. I used to play, pray the rosary, um, you know, and he said, there's one mediator between God and man, Christ Jesus. And I said, yeah, I'm aware of that. He goes, did you ever repent and tell the Lord you're sorry and confess your sin to the Lord? And I said, no, I never did. And so they led me in that. And he said, now we're going to cast out a few things, these demons that came in. And I can't remember exactly what he said, but he looked me right in the eye and commanded them to leave. Well, my teeth started chattering like I, I, I can't even, um, you know, <laughs> make it happen. And I started shaking because things were leaving me. And then he just said, here, come sit over here, honey. The Lord is ministering to you. He's setting you free. And I sat there and literally, you know, I, I don't remember how long. <laughs> but all I know is the next time I was with my family, they said, you are different. You are so calm and peaceful. And I felt different because I got delivered from, from a few things. Yeah. And it wasn't just that one time. There was a progression the Lord took me on. Yeah. You know, it's like he um, gives you a little bit of the land at a time. I think that's even biblical. I don't have that scripture in, in front of you because he you know, he does work in layers of healing you and things. Mm -hmm. you know? And I also had rage because my dad was murdered. Um, and I wanted that gone. Now that I prayed on my knees for over a year asking God to deliver it. And then one time, you know, I was at that church and, and the pastor there said, Roberta, tonight's your night. The Lord has heard you. And they commanded that demon out of me. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, it used to come out of me like a monster because I had unresolved hurts in my soul about my dad's death. Okay. And an enemy was able to lodge there. And that's why the Lord said, the devil has nothing in me. Well, sometimes he has something in us where he can come in and, and torment us. And, you know, um, I had so much anger and unresolved anger about my dad's death that I had suppressed with drinking and carrying on in my younger years. And then it was all coming to a head and God brought healing, but there was some demonic presence there. Yes. And it's, it's uh, in Isaiah, where is that? Let me see here. Um, I think it's in Isaiah six. Uh, what does it say about the Lord? Uh, wait a minute. Let me find it here. that it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted and deliverance ministry actually is a ministry of healing the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives. I was a captive um, that God brought liberty to through the gifts of the Holy Spirit operating in his children and the opening of the prison to those who were bound. I was bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, you know, and it goes on. Okay, so all this is biblical. 
There, there was one question that I always get. Yes. And, and I've even got this through pastors. Okay. That once you're saved, that all of that goes away. No. Um, no. Let's put it this way. Once, once you have gotten delivered from anything, you learn how to do self, what I call self-deliverance. Meaning, I'm going to give you an example. Okay? And, and this isn't a secret. The whole thing that happened with the Mac files. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, the devil was attacking me through that whole relationship, trying to destroy me, trying to hurt me. The, the devil had delight in Roberta being tricked and fooled and all these things, okay? So once I stepped down from that show, what did I do? I forgave, I blessed, I released that individual and those who, you know, blocked me and all that to the Lord. But I also, I broke all ungodly ties with all those people because in the Bible, what happened with Jonathan and uh, David and Jonathan? It said their souls became knit together, okay? Mm -hmm. You get attached to people. And then when people become one flesh, which I did not, but you de develop, um, you become one flesh. So you need to break that apart, okay? For me, it was ungodly ties. You know, like I, I break that ungodly where I was knit together with these people and I send back to them every part of them. I, I call back every part of myself through the shed blood of Jesus because the, the word of God tells us to take every th thought captive to the obedience of Christ and that the weapons of our warfare are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. And it says the devil takes us captive. He took me captive through the deception, through the lying, through the um, gaslighting. Um, and I have a right as a children of God to pull down that stronghold and call back every part of myself that was taken captive by the enemy through the shed blood of Jesus with no demonic attachments because the enemy tries to get in every single way he yeah. can into our lives. So, um, and then... Um, I had to ask God, heal my soul. It says in Psalm 23, you restore my soul. Well, my soul got wounded. My soul yeah. got hurt. And heal my heart where it's broken, Lord. These are all things, well, if we, at least this is the way the Lord showed me to do it when I meet with someone with deliverance. Um, and I always have two other people in praying. And God uses the gifts of the Holy Spirit to set somebody free. And when we start a deliverance, um, what I'll call a deliverance session, okay, we turn everything over to the Lord and the Holy Spirit. You know, Lord, what you want to heal in this individual. So please release everything we need to know to set this person free because somebody will come and it's usually people who need help, who can't get free on their own either right. they're addicted to porn or they're struggling with homosexuality or lesbianism um or some hurt and pain that they just can't shake or depression or whatever and they need help and you know it's it's this is how we minister and if you look at the gifts of the holy spirit i think that's first corinthians 12 um it talks about all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, discerning of spirits. What is that for? That is to minister to people. Um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm an organized person, so I'm the one that usually commands the demons to go. Mm -hmm. and, and the other people will get a word of wisdom and knowledge about something about the person or somebody they need to forgive or whatever. Um, but also, you know, this is the thing. It's the authority in the name of Jesus that demons mm -hmm. leave. So a jackass can cast out a demon <laughs> because <laughs> the name of Jesus works. That's right. Okay. And, um, you know, I don't want to get off track here and be all over the place, but um, where where is the scripture here? Um 
Wait, it might be over here. Oh, I don't have that one, but it's the one where where um, the disciples said, hey, Jesus, those guys over there are casting out demons. You know, um, you know, what should we do? And he said, don't let don't don't bother them. Let them let them do it. You know, if they're if they're not for us, they're if, if they're not against us, they're for us. Yeah. You know, so they what what was happening was the authority of Jesus. Those demons had to go. Now, yeah. now, what's bad about what's happening out there is people filming their deliverance sessions and making a big show out of it, which makes people who really do compassionate, humble deliverance ministry look like idiots. And yeah. I'm totally against that. Anyone who does truly humble, compassionate deliverance ministry would never put it on film. Now, if that's it gets right. filmed by accident or something, but but you know that that's another thing you can't control that. But um, true deliverance ministers are humble, compassionate, and don't want any attention. They want to give all the glory to God. Yeah, and all the glory should go to the Lord. Yes, it's Him. It's His power working. We are just the earthen vessels. Okay. Yes. And, and when I started this, I didn't really start it. I, I was doing grief counseling. And when something would come up where it seemed like somebody had an issue that I felt there was something operating there that needed to go, I would send them to my church. They would have um, deliverance teams do it. Same thing, quietly, you know, yes. with people working with them to get to the root of the issues of why they're having this issue. Mm -hmm. Sometimes maybe they would just need prayer ministry. Okay. Everything isn't a demon too. You know? Right. Right. And, and, you know, and then the Lord spoke to me clearly. Stop sending them over there. I want you to do it. I'm like, oh, and I talked to my pastors and they said, sure. You know, we feel an inner witness to that. We bless you. You know, well, let me know. Let us know when you're doing that and we'll, we'll pray for you. And yeah, and I just started doing it. And, but the Lord had prepared me for years. Mm -hmm. What he does is he starts closing doors um, to movies, TV. Like I don't watch TV. I don't watch TV. There's a few things I watch on YouTube. It's all godly stuff. Um, and um, I think we all should li live clean, pure lives unto the Lord. But he really cut a lot of things out. And it doesn't matter if Sally and Joe do it. You're not doing it. That's right. Um, because he said, you're going to run a tight ship because you're going to have more authority. You know what I mean? Just like, you know, the enemy, the enemy had nothing in Jesus. Um, he was closing up the gaps here. Now, no one's perfect. Believe me, I have my issues. Okay. I got to repent of all the time. And, um, you know, but... It's for your own good if you're going to do this ministry because the enemy does not like being cast out of people. <laughs> These people, no. mm -mm. and they will look for a way to get get back at you. And, yeah. and it's the same old thing. We have to be called to things. We don't just go out and do whatever we want to do. Yeah. But, but every single believer should know how to cast a demon out. And really, you just command it in the name of Jesus. Yes, you do. But it's yeah. different than than. Um, being, being called to that as a ministry. Right. Yeah. So, and then it also can be, you know, a ministry just with your own family because we're constantly being attacked. Yes. In our family, especially if it's a Christian family who's walking the walk and talking the talk, mm -hmm. that the enemy will try to get in. They'll even try to get in through our animals. Mm hmm. And our husbands, our wives, our children. Right. Because whenever I feel like I'm being attacked, sometimes it happens, like it happened this weekend, that it started attacking my husband. And then he was attacking me because of my driving. Mm -hmm. It might be something, you know, that's not really big deal, but 
during that time, I needed, you know, my husband to be able to hear me and, and talk to me. Mm -hmm. And here he is, he's criticizing my driving and I was not driving radically or anything like that, but he was using him mm -hmm. to try to get to me. And, and then I'm like, I, I refuse this. I rebuke this in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need, I need you to get out. Mm -hmm. And, and then what happened was he calmed down. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just things and it does, it, it'll attack through your job. It'll, it'll, he'll use anything that he can. He, mm -hmm. he can even use your vehicle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen it that people, you know, wind up, you know, when they have something really big that they're doing for the Lord, that they want to get into an accident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, they're safe, and, but, what, but still. It, and Jesus said, uh, John 10, 10, the thief comes to rob, kill, and destroy. But yes. I give life and life more abundantly. So if we don't take authority over the enemy, in, in Luke 10, 19, I've given you all authority over the enemy and nothing will by any means hurt you. We yeah. have authority. We do. And, and we can bind him from robbing, killing, stealing, and destroying. In yeah. Jesus. Thing. And that's why people perish for lack of knowledge. Yes. And now listen, I, I want to say this. People, people do die. Okay. Yeah. Um, there isn't a the, there isn't a special formula. The key the key is being led by the whole Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um so yeah, we don't just go running around like nuts, you know, we're gonna cast demons out of everybody. <laughs> you yeah. know, gotta be led by the Holy Spirit. And, um, you do. And when you're not, then you're put in danger. Right. Right. But what, when I was challenged with um, deliverance being biblical, um, the Lord gave me this like little thing with the Lord's prayer. Um, do you mind if I share that? No, not at all. So um what does the Lord's Prayer start with? Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the Lord said, when you're when you're um, ministering to people with deliverance, you're bringing my kingdom come, my will be done. And um, in Matthew 12, 28, it says, but if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, then the kingdom has come upon you. OK, so it's a kingdom ministry. It's a kingdom work. OK. Um, and another thing I want to say, Matthew 7, 20 to 22 says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And many people will use that scripture to discount uh deliverance ministry yeah but the 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 key thing in that scripture jesus is addressing is not knowing him okay you're you, the, the, there's a, i wish i knew the, the scripture reference but it says in the word of god um the gifts are without repentance that means you can prophesy you can cast out demons and be living like the devil yeah and not know jesus but there's power in his name and those gifts don't get taken back. That's why um, I was fooled with the Mac files. Yeah. Thinking this is a godly person because the word of God's being uh, yeah. taught. Would never dream that the person would have lied and uh, deceived me, you know? So, yeah. so Matthew 7.22 is they use that. But really, Jesus, the key, Jesus is saying, I never knew you. You used your gifts, but you didn't have a relationship with me. Yeah. Okay. So, and that is key. You know, you, you can do anything out there, but if you don't know him, you're in big trouble. Yeah. And then also, Roberta, with that, you know, it, it the person that's coming to get healing, you know, they're trusting that person who's praying over them. 
Right. And it's their faith and their heart that Jesus will not deny that person from healing. Yeah. Even though the person that's praying over them. Right. Exactly. The, the, the person that's praying over them might be wicked and, and doing these things. You know, doing this in, in vain of, of Jesus. You know, right. this is what Chad and I were talking about this last night. Mm -hmm. um, Thou shalt not use my name in vain. Mm -hmm. It's not like saying, oh, my God, or, you know, saying his name. It's preaching and calling out his name. Yes. Well, I don't know what it just happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> my internet. That, as I said, it, it's not denying that person from that healing. Mm -hmm. No matter what, what that per other person is doing in their life. Right. It has nothing to do with that. But there is power. And, and that's why these men and women are abusing it. And you're, they're abusing his name. Yep. And that is taking his name in vain. Yes, 100%. Um, and then Matthew 9, 34 says, but the Pharisees were saying he cast out demons by the ruler of demons. And you know what that is? That That's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And people better be real careful of saying that deliverance and casting out demons is of the devil. They said it to Jesus. They said it to his disciples. Okay. And it's blasphemy. You're talking about the power of the Holy Ghost that raised Jesus from the dead that has yeah. power over demons. And you're going to say, oh, Roberta Foster's got a demon. I, I heard, I'm not going to say the person's name. They were calling people who do, who do deliverance demon freaks. Okay. You're going to answer to God. Yeah. About us being demon freaks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd have some fear. And this is what's going to return to the house of God, the fear of God. The Lord, you know, is bringing back the fear of God on this stuff. That would, you know, um, in, in, in Luke 9, 1, he called the 12 together, gave them power and authority over all demons to heal diseases. And, and, and some people will say, well, that was just for the, the, the uh, disciples. But in Mark 16, this is the Great Commission. After Jesus rose from the dead, okay, um, Mark 16, verse 14 through 18. This is the, the, the words that we are told what we are to do, our job assignment on earth. Later, he appeared to the 11 as they sat at the table. This is after he rose from the dead and he rebuked their unbelief. There's people you don't believe in the power of the name of Jesus that can cast out demons. He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. Yeah. Let me read that again. In my name, this, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Okay. That's praying in the Holy Ghost. Okay. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Okay. And I'm sure Jamie can testify. I can testify. We, we have seen people healed. And probably everyone on here who is a true believer has prayed for people and seen people healed. It's all Jesus. This is not, it's not us, but we yes. have faith. I've also seen people I prayed for not get healed. But I, that doesn't stop me from believing. that. That's where God's sovereign will comes in. Because there can be many things that, in play, okay, when people yeah. die or get sick, okay? Um, but going back to the Lord's Prayer, okay, so it says, our father in heaven, um, he's the deliverer. And this is the key. 
This has nothing to do with Jamie or me or anyone else who has deliverance. Our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, they're the deliverer, not us, okay? So it's the cross, it's the resurrection, yet he uses us as earthen, earthen vessels. His will is his kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And we want his will, nothing more, nothing less. And in order for some people to, to get the joy and the peace and the righteousness is through deliverance ministry because they're not having it in their life and they're struggling. Okay. And then the next script, you know, part of the Lord's prayer says, give us this day our daily bread. And then um, he's the bread that comes down from heaven, right? He's the one that sets the captives free. And in Matthew 15, um, 21 through 28, uh, Can you repeat that one more time? Yeah, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew um, 15, 21 through 28, it says, um, Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yet, yet, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed that very hour. Okay. But it says there, it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to little dogs. And this, her daughter was demon possessed. It is our bread, our yes. daily bread to, to have deliverance, to be set free from demons and sickness and illness. It's our bread. Okay. In the yeah. Lord's Prayer, you're asking for it. And Jesus even said, "This pray this way. So there's a lot in this prayer. Um, so we're asking for our daily bread when we minister deliverance ministry to somebody. Their daily, daily bread. And then it, it, the next part of the Lord's Prayer, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Repentance, which is the message of Jesus. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's the message of John the Baptist. Repent, bear fruits worthy of repentance is the key. The whole thrust of deliverance ministry is repenting mm -hmm. because you have to forgive those who sinned against you. You have to forgive. Yeah. If you were raped, if you were abused, you have to, sometimes you have to repent of your own sin. I was a prostitute, whatever it is, um, for five years. I don't want to do that anymore. Um, whatever it is i'm an alcoholic you know there's there's christians that are addicted to many substances yes you know? um and we have to repent and say i'm sorry lord i confess my sin one john one nine says if we confess our sin he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness okay so that there is no deliverance without repentance okay? that's right yeah. Um, and then the next part, and don't lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. We're asking Father to do to deliver us right there in the Lord's prayer. And and you know, and that's a good prayer to pray every single day, you know, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory. He's the deliverer, he alone gets the glory for true deliverance ministry. If you see somebody constantly on social media, I cast out a demon today and showing it and all this stuff, run. Yes. <laughs> We're not yes. giving glory to God. Yes. We, we, we can't touch his glory. It's all in him, through him and for him. Um, true deliverance ministry. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I'll tell you something, Roberta, when I first went to Global Vision, when they started deliverance, it was one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. 
It was during the service. And then if someone needed deliverance and then we went into a separate building, you know, it would be on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would not leave. We would get done at church about one o'clock, sometimes two o'clock. Mm-hmm. And and I wasn't leaving until six or seven or eight o'clock that night. Mm-hmm. That we were having them on the side and doing one on one deliverance on them. Mm-hmm. And that went on for weeks, and it might have went on for like two months. And then after that, and then he decided, well, we want to be able to heal more people at one time that we'll just start doing this mass deliverance. But I didn't feel comfortable with it, but I did it because I was still worried about that person who was coming into the tent. And during the time that I was doing deliverance, you know, with the mass deliverance, I would just do one-on-one with somebody. You know, I didn't have multiple people that I'm praying over her over them, you Mm -hmm. know, at the same time, because there were so many people that were, they were coming in mass droves. There's so many people that are hurt and, and, and want to be healed from all of this. Yes. To be oppressed is like it, every, everything is, is put up, is weighing you down. Right. It's not allowing you to be able to function sometimes in society. Mm -hmm. It's causing depression, some some in drinking, drugs. Because there's so many people that are deeply rooted in hurt. Yes. And that's what the deliverance does. It 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 gets to the deep root of it. And then yeah. once the Holy Spirit shows you, once you're able to get to that deeply root of what this is, and that's when the healing begins. Yes, absolutely. And and people that make you know such a joke out of this. Mm-hmm. And when I was in, we were not allowed to have our cell phones with us. We were not allowed to record. And if anybody in the audience was recording, they were taken out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I left. I was called a witch (laughs) in the church Mm. because I was seeing healing and there was healing that was happening in the the name of Jesus. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and these people weren't, weren't healing the chaos and everything. They were actually healed. They were healed of breast cancer that I prayed over. There was one woman who, um, we'll, we'll get into this. Maybe we'll talk about this now, Roberta, mm-hmm. about soul ties. And mm-hmm. then also about generational curses. Mm-hmm. And gener- generational curses are real. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I was on the show, I had to defend generational curses because they think that the, if you're saved, that those generational curses have taken are taken off of you. Can you Mm -hmm. explain a little bit about generational curses? Um, I, I, I'm a little, I kind of changed my train of thought because it, well, it says a curse undeserved won't rest. Okay. And what, what I think is missing in the body of Christ is they'll say Jesus, you know, became a curse for us when he hung on the tree. And it says in the Bible, he wiped out the handwriting that was against, against us on the wall. He blotted it out with his blood. But you need to apply that. Yeah. You need to apply that to whatever is operating. And ask the Lord, what is the cause if you see anything repeating in your life? Um, I'm going to give an example. If your dad committed adultery Mm -hmm. and divorced your mom and married somebody else, okay, and then you see that pattern in your life, I mean, come on. 
It doesn't take a brain scientist. Yeah. Something's repeating here. There's a weakness. And what it is is familiar spirits. And that is very biblical. Familiar spirits. They are familiar with you, with your family. What sin is in your family? What weakness? Okay. Uh, addictions, one in my family with my dad was an alcoholic, you know, and it goes back and back. Um, that, you know, they look for an opening. They look for weakness. Now, yes, we can say no to it. And usually what happens, it seems, is people either say no to it and are fine and, or they give into it. Yeah. And and then it needs to be broken. I, I had a spirit of death on my family, too. And, and that was, you know, another time I met with my pastor's wife years ago and Honestly, when she commanded this thing to do, go, I felt like something was choking me by the neck. It didn't want yeah. to like up. Yeah. So it's real. I'm sorry. It is real. You know, no one's going to tell real. you it's not real when it happens to you. <laughs> yeah. And you experience God's power. No. And, and I saw that time and time again because the spirit of death is really strong. Mm -hmm. It's really strong on people. Yeah. And what do you think about generational curses with um, Freemason? Um, well, I know there's a very long prayer because um, years ago I said it. <laughs> it's very long to renounce all the components of Freemasonry. Um, and I know many people said it over the years. Um, um, all I can say is we're still here um, where there's been death and destruction, um, you know, so, um, again, it's repenting of sin. Um, so if you're repenting of sin and that sin and those doors were opened up and they were never closed, um, yeah. And I can't explain everything because it seems like things skip generations and, um, all kinds of things. We, we don't understand everything. I'm going to be the first one to say that, you know, and then there's Ezekiel 18 that says, you know, that, you know, if the, if the father sins, that's his sin. And if the spot, if the son doesn't sin, you know, that he's going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. So you're also, when you walk right, and walk with the Lord, you're, you're building righteousness in your bloodline. You're building righteousness up for your kids. Like I know just because I live righteously that I, every step I take, every breath I take, I'm building righteousness for my, those who come after me. If the mm -hmm. Lord carries. Okay. Cause it's, it's, it's living a righteous life for the Lord is very powerful. Okay. Um, it, and and the, the first person to do that in a family usually goes through hell and back <laughs> because yeah. you're standing up and saying, no, I'm not going to live like the devil. I'm not going to be a drunk like my father. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be a liar or a slackered or whatever. I'm living for Jesus. Yeah. You know? And, and you got to work, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling and make a choice every day to serve the Lord. So it, it, it's not a cakewalk. And, and when yes, you have, have grown up in a family, and it's interesting, I think God brings people to do deliverance ministry who come out of those families who've been abused and things because you have compassion yeah, you know, and, and love for people because you went through stuff. Yeah. And, and you have the patience and grace to listen to people's stories and have the Holy Spirit pinpoint, hey, they need to forgive this one. They need to forgive that one. They need to, to break ungodly ties with these people who, who rape them or sexually abuse them. And he puts like, it's like the pictures, it's like the pieces of a puzzle that he puts someone's heart back together. And he, you can he does. part of it. He does. He mends it. Yep. And, you know, it's just like the vase that is broken. He, he dips it in gold. Yeah. And, and that's what he does with our heart. And that's yeah. why he says, you know, guard your heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and I just, I want to say one more thing about generational curses. It's like, it'll have the power you give it. But you have to break it, apply the blood of Jesus 
forgive everyone involved if you see any pattern. And a, and a good prayer to say is, Lord, I repent of sins I don't even know about. Yeah. <laughs> that may yeah. have happened. Because after a while, it gets kooky. Okay, I'm yeah. not into the kooky part. Let, let's yeah. just make this simple. I apply the blood. Jesus became a curse for me when he hung on the cross. He he, Any pact, secrecy, oath, he blotted out that handwriting on the wall that was against me with his blood. So we apply that today, and we're going to stand on that. Yeah, you know, and whatever it might be, addiction, death, whatever. No, no more in my family. We live out all our days in Jesus' name. Yeah, Hallelujah. And I thank God that He gives us the power because the power of, of prayer over our children, yes, is extremely powerful. We have the power of the Holy Spirit to pray over our children. Yes. Even as adults. Yes. You know, asking for that coverage of protection. Yes. And to be able to show our children the true meaning of our Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it might not come through us, but it will. we have to show it through our fruits. In the way we talk and way we talk to them. Mm -hmm. In the way that we act. Yes. And, and then also we can pray for people to come into their lives. Yes. Show them the truth. Yep. 100%. Because our children go through trials every single day. And as a parent, as a mom, mm -hmm. it's very, very hard to see. Yes. But knowing that I do have the comfort that the Lord says, I love them just as much as you do even more. Mm -hmm. Amen. And well, we'll get back one more time with the um, generational curses, because this is what I found out through um, deliverance, mm -hmm. that there's a lot of families that are in the free mas masonry. Mm -hmm. And um, in some of the Freemasons, you know, they're sex trafficking children. Um, I I've seen it that they even use them and these parents have abused their children under this demonic Freemason. Wow. And, and it's also infiltrated in the children's psych, you know, psychology, child psychology, psychologists. Mm -hmm. um, they're free. A lot of them are Freemasons. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so they wind up taking these children <laughs> and abusing them. Mm -hmm. And 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 they and they they're doing that in churches now, Roberta. Mm, I believe it. Of you course. know, some of these big mega churches and stuff, you know, there's an there's an underground child trafficking that mm -hmm. is happening. And and a lot of them that the, that these, um, so that there was people and, and you know as adults now they were coming to me, you know, and telling me these stories and telling me what happened to them. Wow. One of them was abused so many times by his stepfather in their basement. But he did get fully delivered. Mm -hmm. Completely. Oh, praise and, the Lord. Praise and, God. And saw his whole life just change. Mm -hmm. And not only was, you know, him, but also his wife. Mm -hmm. Because, praise you know, he, he was getting to the point that he was extremely verbally abusive to his wife. Mm -hmm. And it almost got to be physical. Treated her like so bad. Wow. And they both got healing. They got, you know, one room, she was there. In the other room, you know, he was with another gentleman. But I was there too, you know, because I didn't do a lot of deliverance on men. Mm -hmm. Unless I had a whole bunch of people around me. Yes. You know. But mostly my deliverance was with women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I have and, done some men, but I always have a man. Yes. I'm yeah. With me, never by myself. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that's one thing. And what getting back to that, there's a lot of deliverance books and, and, and deliverance classes. Roberta, what do you think about that? I think it's, you know, the Holy Spirit teaches you like, like when the Lord led me to do it, he showed me what he wanted me to do. And I, I'll never forget the first time I did it. I did almost jump out of my skin when the demon manifested and screamed. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah. And then the Lord said, bind, bind it from manifesting. You don't have yeah. to let it manifest. And so I started doing that. And that just shuts all that down. Yeah. Uh, but he's, I'm not kidding. He spoke into the my heart as she hears voice. Me Welcome too. To the family business. Me too. When I got home. Welcome to the family business. Is that that's what I heard him say? So it's it's you know, it's part of his ministry to the body of Christ yeah. that he paid his blood for, you know, so for us to be free and healed. Um, you know, so but do you, do you want me to, like I have a scripture, like why we anoint with oil? Yes, yes, go oil. go ahead. It's, okay. yep, um, it's your hour. <laughs> okay. um, all right, so because usually when we start a session, we invite, we anoint everyone with oil, ourselves mm -hmm. included, the person we're ministering to. And James 5.14 says, is anyone among you sick? And I put in parentheses, spiritually, physically, emotionally, then he must call for the elders of the church. And that's what they do. Hey, I heard you do deliverance. I'm coming in. Can I come in? And they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. That's why we do it. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible, Bible says, and for those coming against deliverance ministry, you might want to read the Bible because you need to obey what the Bible says instead of, mm -hmm. you know, making people who do it. The right way look like a bunch of fools. Okay. Why do we break soul ties? 1 Samuel 18, 1. And that, honestly, since Mo Marsha Montego or whatever gave soul ties a bad name, you know, soul attachments, um, where I was knit together with somebody. Okay. 1 Samuel 18, 1. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the souls of Jonathan and David were knit together and Jonathan loved him as himself. So our souls can be knit together with someone. Okay. Now that can, it, and it can be in a good way, but it can also be in an ungodly way, a codependent way. And mm -hmm. we need to break those. I break all ungodly ties with Joe in Jesus name. Okay. And then Genesis two twenty four. therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they become one flesh. Now in the past, I've ministered to people who were in prostitution. Do you know Matt, how many people they became one flesh with? One girl said she was tied to a bed, 50 people a day. Yes. This girl wanted to stay in prison because she didn't want to be out and abused anymore. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah. this is what, what, what's going on out there. Yes, it and, is. And, and she felt the power of God. I, all I can say is whenever over the years, the, these, when, when we have people repent of sexual immorality, prostitution, any sexual sin, and then break the ungodly ties and the soul ties with pimps, with their, with every man they were with, every woman they were with. Cause there's, there's, there's guys that go through this too. Yes. And, and then we have them break it and send back every part of that. I have them write all the names of the people they were with and send back all the parts of those people back to them and call back every part of yourself that got attached to them because you became one flesh through the blood of Jesus back to them. Most of them say, I felt that. And most of them, yeah. you know, start crying. And I yeah. know you, you have experienced the same thing. Yes. Okay. This is across the board. So in, you know, that got um, attacked under Marsha Montego, but I went before the Lord 
And the Lord said, you know, the next morning, um, I said, Lord, is soul ties wrong? And what he said to me, he said, really what, what is moving when you're doing this is that they're repenting of these activities and forgiving those who sinned against them and forgiving themselves. Yeah. And they're asking me, um, cause I, I typed out a prayer that I just give them to pray. It just makes life easier. Just asking God restore my purity. Um, you know, which the Lord does by his grace and mercy, because they're asking for it. But he said, it's really the repentance part that moves heaven. Yeah. Okay. But the other part is, is, you know, a necessary thing. It's, it brings healing to the person that they're being cleansed from all this garbage. I mean, some of these people have been assaulted terribly. Uh, I mean, just yeah. horrific, horrific things. Yeah. And yeah. And you have such compassion for them it, mm -hmm. because it's just like, you know, how, how did you deal with this? Right. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's horrendous. Um, it, so, and why do we ask the Lord to heal, heal our soul where it's been wounded? Psalm 23, three, he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. And then in three, three, John one, two, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper concerning all things and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. Our soul is to be restored and prosper, but many walk around with a wounded soul. Okay. You know, for many reasons, People can hurt and reject you and abandon you. It doesn't always have to be a rape or I was a prostitute or whatever. Um, right. You know, we we are wounded. Many, you yes. know, when someone hurts me, you know, let's face reality. It happens on a daily basis almost, you know. Yes, it does. I forgive them. I bless them. I release them to God. Lord, forgive me for judging them in any way. And um, what's the other thing? And Lord, heal my soul where it hurts right now. Yeah. And restore my soul. And no, we're it, walking in it, deliverance. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you're doing this type of ministry and mm -hmm. you're telling the truth, mm -hmm. we really start seeing these other people's true hearts. Yes. And whether or not, you know, they were friends and or family. And that's going around a lot with a lot of people. Yes. Yep. A lot of people are, you know, losing relationships with family members, friends that they've had for years. Mm -hmm. Very true. Very it's true. Sort of an epidemic right now. Mm -hmm. And that's another way for the enemy to get in. Mm -hmm. Because he will, he will, he will, you know, start you know having these having these people go against us mm -hmm. it's a it's an, a spiritual battle yes. can you explain what a spiritual battle is oh i know it's a big thing i know it's a big thing <laughs> yeah you well, know well, that's well. what we're battling now good against evil and i was and gonna it say, is, you know what i was gonna say jamie it's it's my my life every day <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is. It is. That that's why the, the the Bible says, "Put on the the full armor of God that you may stand against the wiles of the devil." Um, we are in a sp spiritual battle against good and evil in this in this uh, world. I mean, the whole Bible is full of scriptures about that. You know, yeah. um, it says, don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. He's a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. So what are you going to do? Just let him eat your lunch and eat, eat up you and your family. We have to stand and we have to do the things the Lord said. That's why we, we read his word and we do it. And that is also why if we get stuck, we have to go to other members of the body of Christ and say, help, I need prayer. Pray yeah. for you know, and, you know, and if, if, if you have a major league stronghold and struggle that you can't deal with your own, that's where you, what, when you go for, um, 
deliverance ministry. Yeah. But um, I know when I used to minister out at the homeless shelter, I'd come home and I would totally collapse. And I would many times feel totally oppressed and depressed. Mm -hmm. After having this great meeting and all kinds of full of joy there, um, it, it was a spiritual attack. Yeah. And one time the Lord spoke to my heart, you brought back some hitchhikers. I'm like, what? <laughs> mm. and, and he mentioned depression, oppression. I'm like, oh, wow. And I just said, and it, all spirits, oppression, depression, get off of me in the name of Jesus. And yes, yes. I did have to rest because I, I just went through a whole, you know, meeting and things. And we do have to rest and take care of ourselves. But the battle is real. It okay? is. And, and the enemy wants you to think he doesn't exist. He exists. He is real. And like like Jesus said, the thief can't, comes to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. And we're in that battle every day. And yeah. we have to take authority. You know, even the guys at the group home with their, with, you know, they're they're in a different place. They're battling mental issues. They they get it. I've seen my son outside. Satan, get out of here! I rebuke you. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, hey. yeah. He's getting <laughs> standing up in the spirit, you know. So. And even though what they're going through, they're still able to see that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They're able and to see. Yeah, and if you look it. You know, all through the Bible, it gives you different ways to, you know, praise and worship is a weapon. Rest is a weapon. Laughter is a weapon. It, it's walking in, um, you know, the abundant life Jesus gave us. And it says, mm -hmm. you know, we, we trample serpents and scorpions under our feet in Psalm 91. You know? It's like the more victorious we are and the more we don't put up with the enemy's stuff, he starts fleeing. You know, resist the devil and he will flee. Yes. I'm preaching to myself right now. <laughs> I know. I know. And, and I am too. Because we will always constantly go through this battle until we're face to face with the Lord. Yes. Yes. Because the enemy is not going to quit. Right. Right. And who does he go after? He goes after God's children, the yep. ones that are saved, more than he goes with the ones because he's already has them. Yep. He already has them under their control and under their grip. Yes. Yep. And and what do you think he does? He goes after the churches. Yes. He yeah. works his way through through people who come into these churches. Right. And this is where we get the spirit of Jezebel. Yeah. In yeah. these churches. Yeah. And we get the spirit of Legion. And the spirit of Baal. Yes. Yeah. They're more yeah. prominent in the churches than they are anywhere else right now. Right. Right. And he has many, many of his people out of that system um, right now. And he's been pulling them out over the years because he's going to deal with that system. There's going to be major. To yes. Yeah. Those systems. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's what happened. The Lord pulled me out of churches. He pulled mm -hmm. me out. He's like, no. Yep. No more. Me too. Me too. Where two or three are gathered. He is there. Yeah. And. You know, the church is not a building. We are the church. That's right. And I believe we're to be out there more than we're to be in a building anyway. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. You know, and I'm just, I give him all the honor and the glory for me to be able to use his voice through this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amen. Amen. And amen. to be able to have people like you. And, and the other guests that I've had, it, it's just amazing. And we have such a precious small group, don't we, Roberta? Yes. Yeah. Really, really genuine people. Yeah. And I hope we get to meet in person, some of us. Oh, I hope so, too. I'm really praying over that, that we'd be able to meet sometime this year. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, because the only time that we're able to, you know, we talk 
constantly. Mm -hmm. but there's, there's just so many different moving parts. And, and just like with the 12 disciples, they were um, gifted in so many different ways and mm -hmm. how he knit them together. Yes. Yep. Yep. And, and even when, you know, he told the disciples to go out, he never let them go by themselves. Right. Set them two by two. Yeah. Two by two. Right. And that's a lesson for me to learn to make sure whenever I'm going to be talking about deliverance or anything, I have to make sure I have a wingman. And, and you're it. <laughs> you're it, Roberta. Because a lot <laughs> okay. of people don't understand because, you know, actually, unfortunately, this is what's been hidden in the church, that there's healing power in the, in the name of Jesus. Right. And, and how the Holy Spirit can dwell within us. Mm -hmm. And that the churches don't teach you that. Right. Right. Because they want you to be dependent on them. Right. And what they're teaching. I'll, they, want, they want to have control. I'll, I'll never forget, um, it was a juvenile correction facility. I, I have, a, have a friend who has a ministry, um, Tony Wood. And um, I used to go once a month. And since COVID, they, they really limit people from going in there. But I used to go once a month, support his ministry and, and, and speak to the guys. He'd give everyone who was a minister time to talk to these uh, juveniles. And... Mm -hmm. The one time I said, you know, some of you out there believe in Allah, Zen, Buddha, but I got to tell you guys something. It's only at the name of Jesus that demons come out. Mm -hmm. And then I told about me getting them cast out. Well, I had I had to share there before or whatever, but this time I did say, if anybody needs prayer, I'll be in the back. I went in the back and that time I did not have anyone with me, unfortunately, but I went in the back. This, this, this was all guys, by the way, all lined up in a line for prayer. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> okay, yes. Holy Spirit, yes. better show up. And I'm looking around at these other Christians who came. Not one person came to help me pray or anything. It's like I don't get the body of Christ sometimes. But do you know many of them renounced Allah and received Christ? And, 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 and they were actually saying, I think I have a demon. I go, what kind? I said, let's pray. And and I don't even remember what happened, but I, I did command demons to leave and different things happened. Um, but that is the name of Jesus. And that got mm -hmm. their attention. Yeah. Said that about Buddha and everything. And, you know, and that's what I think the world needs to see too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so the people out there, you don't believe in casting out demons and you don't believe the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. I have a. No. And it's here true. Full of pages about demons. Being cast out. You know, and, and isn't it, I, I don't want to say it's crazy, but it, isn't it like the, the Lord and the Holy Spirit, when it comes to deliverance, he'll put you in situations like that, you know, where you're having all these men come and line up. <laughs> for prayer. Yes. You know, can you imagine how much, and it is, uh, the power and protection that he gives you in order to be able to do that? Yeah. Well, it, you know what it, it is? It's, it's an awareness. It, it's all him. It's no, all it, it is. It's, yeah. it's all him. So I'm yeah, just saying yeah. that it's so powerful. Yeah. yeah. Because there is no way that you can do that without him. There, there's right. it, it, there's no way. It right. would have been the opposite. You would have been hurt. Yes. Yeah. You you know because you're you're going against principalities. Right. Right. And, right. and I thought it was just incredible because I I was you know doing deliverance on one man. He was six foot three. <laughs> and his his wife knew that they were coming for deliverance and coming in and two nights before they were coming the woman had a dream mm -hmm. 
that this woman was was trying to take her husband away. And the person was me. Oh, wow. And when she came up to me and she said, she said to her husband, she goes, that's her. That's the woman who, who I had a dream of and, and said that you were going to, um, she was going to have something taken away from you. Mm -hmm. And she thought it was, you know, that I was going to take her husband away from her. Mm -hmm. And so by the end of the service, I mean, he was staring me down. Oh, wow. And I can see, you know, there was like a little bit of a fire in his eyes. Mm -hmm. And, and I just kept on looking back. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. You, you calm him down in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, and then I saw him calming down. And at the end of the service, um, we did deliverance, you know, it was one-on-one. -on -one. So I asked three men to back me up because mm -hmm. I said, I am going against Legion. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit told me it was a spirit of Legion. Oh, wow. I knew that I was going under the big guns, you know? Mm -hmm. so, the, uh, yeah. the, so the three men are like, yeah, we got you, we got you. And I'm like, okay. So I'm, I said, I'm going to cast it out. And when I started, you know, praying over him and casting it out, the guy was sort of like trying to come up against me, put his fist up in my face. Oh, wow. And said that, you know, that he was going to hurt me and everything. And I just stood there. <laughs> and. And, and was battling, you know, just back and forth for, I think it took about five minutes. Mm -hmm. and, and then we just, I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving. The three men that were supposed to have my back ran out of the tent. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they ran out of the tent. They must have their own demons. <laughs> they, they must have, they, they were like, we don't want any, we don't want any part of this. Wow. And so about five minutes and I'm like, no, you're, you're coming out in the name of Jesus. You're not going to have a stronghold. I said, I have the authority under the name of Jesus and, mm -hmm. and I command you to leave. You have to leave. Yep. And he did. Mm -hmm. And the man just like dropped down to his knees crying. And he goes, he refused to leave. He just kept on telling me that he was going to torture me and, and that he will never leave me. Wow. And, and he's like, he's gone. Praise God. Praise God. And so he just started praying, you know, confessed everything, you know, what well, we did before, you know, he started confessing some things, but, you know, but just given, and I have no power. <laughs> There's no power without right. him. Right. Amen. Amen. I did not do anything. You right. know, all I did was just, just go and do what the Holy Spirit was telling me to do. Right. Right. I, I have, I, you know, when, when I'm battling that, I have no fear because fear does not come from him. Amen. And, and, and then you could see the restoration and you've seen it too, Roberta. It's, it's a complete change over their face. Yes. In their yes. body. Yes. And the yes. way that they talk. Yes. It's just absolutely mind boggling and amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that's how powerful it is. And that, that's why the enemy does not want us to do what we're doing. Right. Right. And to discredit. Yes. Uh, and, and to discredit. And, you know, and he also uses Christians to discredit this too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. So, oh, Roberta, this... I, I think this was an awesome show. 
Yeah. And and we're just hoping. Do you mind praying over some some of these people that are on here? And I know some of these people are are going through depression, hurt, death. Uh, so yeah, many- yeah, I I can't see anybody. Just so you know. Oh wait, can I? Uh oh, what did I do? I I can't see any anything they've written. So yeah, can somebody write something. Um. Yes. Oh, okay. What they write? Um. Well, Gary did get on here. Um, Gary invited you and I to be on his show. Okay. I'll pray. I'll pray about that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Okay. And there's a guy named Chris and his comment was not one person will go to a secret club when they die. They will look at God straight in the eye and tell him why they didn't respect him instead of any secret club. We'll be able to answer that on another, you know. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. I'm sorry. I know there was one and I can't see in their comments, but, but Roberta, we have Robin on here. We have Jamie, we have Chad, um, Amber. Okay. Um, you know, that I, that I would just like to just be able to pray over the people that are watching. Yes. Yes. Okay. So father, we just thank you and praise you, um, for all the gifts that you have given the body of Christ to minister to one another, to bring freedom and liberty, to set the captives free. And Lord, you know every single person that is watching uh, this, this podcast. And Lord, I apply the blood of the new covenant over every single one of them and Jamie and myself. And Lord, you know the promises and the things we have asked you for, where we need healing, where we need deliverance, um, where our hearts have been broken, where our souls have been wounded, um, things that have plagued us, infirmities. And Lord, we are asking, Father, that you would minister to each one. And and we pray that you will break through from heaven and bring promises fulfilled and desires fulfilled in their lives, Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I know you said you would bring rain on your remnant and and that you would restore your remnant for the years the locusts have eaten and i pray you would surround each one with songs of healing and deliverance father because that's who you are jesus you paid the price with your blood for us to be healed for us to be delivered for 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 our hearts to to be healed where they're broken so lord heal the root of any of the bad fruit in our lives, God. And we ask, Lord, where we've been robbed and plundered in our bodies, souls, or spirits, we say, restore, O God. Restore, O God, each one. In Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you. We ask for deliverance and healing, which is our bread. We ask for our daily bread, Lord. It's ours, and we believe you for it. And forgive us for for being unbelieving. Mm -hmm. Forgive us for coming against things that are truth in your word too, Lord. Forgive us. Forgive us. We've all done it. We've Mm -hmm. all done it. And and forgive all our sins. We forgive those who've sinned against us. And we pray you would release your healing oil over this audience in Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And before we go, Roberta, we were talking, you know, before, before we came on and I would love to do, um, a Q and a show. 
Okay, that's so cool. Anybody yeah. who has any questions about deliverance or there are some things that you're battling in your life and we would love to, to hear from you and we'll keep everything that you sent on your email private. It's just between Roberta and I mm -hmm. and it wouldn't go any further than that. Mm -hmm. But we want to bring grace and mercy and healing upon these people that are watching and that will watch it in the future. That I would love to be able to do um, a Q&A within another week or two. Okay. So there's my email. Here I am show at gmail.com. And I have Roberta's email. So if you, you know, make it that you want to just talk to Roberta, I will forward it straight on over to her. Um, all these emails you send in will be private. Nobody else will, will know um, what is going on because, as we said when we were talking, things are very, very deeply rooted in people. And some of these things that they've never told another person. Mm -hmm. And but we want to see healing. We want to see healing upon you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. This is why I do the show because I give him all the honor and all the glory. And then we want what we received through the Holy Spirit. I want people to know. And I want them to be able to be in full peace yes. with our Lord. And it doesn't have to wait until you see him face to face. Those promises are still promised here on earth. That we can live in, in, in total peace. That doesn't mean that we're not going to be battling some things. Mm -hmm. We're gonna, we are. We're gonna battle some things until we see them. But to be able to take the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit and put it upon us, that when we do go through these battles, we can rebuke it in His name, and it has to flee. It cannot be a stronghold on you any longer. So whatever you need, it, it could be just a simple prayer, you know, or you want us to pray and, and help you um, with your children or wh whatever it is, please email us and yeah. we'd be glad. We will email you right away. Yes. And, and then after that, and if it's private, but then we'll do a Q&A. And it might just, you know, hey, just pray over my husband because he needs healing or pray over my wife or my children. And we will we will have a show with all dedication to him yeah. and see the power of his healing through that. So we're hoping that this grips your heart. This gives you something to really think about. Um, it's a lot to take in. But, but man, to be able to be glorified in him, there's nothing else like it. Amen. So thank you so much, Roberta. I'm thank looking you. forward to having you on another week or two, but we will give um, people, you know, enough time to send in their emails. And I can't wait to be able to talk and, and be able to be with these people. Yeah, me too. So me too. thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Roberta, for everything. Yeah, you too. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, thank you. Anytime. This is your platform too. This is what it is. Thank it's you. People like you that are working for the kingdom, and that's what I want. It's not about views. Right. Right. And it's not about money. It's right. about him. Amen. So thank you, Roberta. Love you. Love you too. Love you too. Right, bye. bye bye. I just wanted to thank Roberta again. And we just hope that this really spoke to your heart. Um, 
to me, I, re I really think this is a powerful show. And it's just giving you the truth about what deliverance is. And there is true healing in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'll be doing another show. Um, it probably will be aired on Thursday at 12 o'clock. Um, my guest is Roberta. I'm not Roberta. Victoria Robinson. And she does what you call reassemble. And it's for people that have gone through abortion and that are post-abortive, even men and women. She does these retreats um, for men and women. And I'm going on a retreat this weekend in order to go through the program because I'm, I'm one of those that was post-abortive. But in order for me to be able to help her through her ministry, I have to go through the program. And so I, so I can know exactly how it works and to be able to help um, these other men and women help with their healing. So I'm having her on tomorrow to be, to be able to explain more about her um, retreats and her mission. And then after I'm done, after the weekend, because it's a four, it's a four day thing. I have to stay there. And and then the following week, we're gonna do a follow up, and I'm gonna go through a little bit of my experience of what happened during the retreat, because I know there's always more healing. There's still continuous healing in our life that we're battling. It's not a hundred percent healed, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. And I want to be able to help these other women too. So in order for me to help, I have to go, go and see and go through the program just so I can be able to help other women too. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. I'm a little anxious because what it does, it brings up, you know, my past and what I did, but I know through the strength of the Holy Spirit, it, it is so much easier because I know that the healing was already done, but there's always we're continuously healing in this life until we're able to see him until we're a hundred percent completely healed and all our tears, tears will be wiped away and all things will become new. And I hope you guys are having an awesome day. God bless you. And thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for watching the Here I Am Show. For prayer requests, questions, or show information, email me at hereiamshow at gmail.com.